so she looks at me and she said, is this what your life was really all about? This is what you did? I said, honey, it's a movie. They make things up. Don't pay attention, right? I'm eating. All of a sudden, it comes to that scene. There's Michael Franzi. She looks at me and says, let's go, honey. Come on. everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good, very blessed on this end. As always, I give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that. Hope everybody is doing well. A lot of you have been contacting me really concerned about what's going on in the world, and rightfully so. Look, there's a lot of stuff going on, but my only advice to all of you is this. What is not in your control, don't let it get to you as best as you possibly can. Don't let it get to you. You can only concern yourself with things that you have in your control. Control. Maybe prepare a little bit for the future financially if you're worried about things that might be happening. You know, use your head, be smart with respect to things like that. But you know, if you have no control over a situation, what can you do about it? If you worry yourself sick or worry yourself to death, not going to help. Take care of what you have in your control. Make sure you got all your bases covered as best as you possibly can. Life goes on. If you're a Christian, you know, we believe, you know, God is ultimately in control of all of this. We pray about it. We do the best we possibly can. But don't let it, uh, you know, get to you and worry yourself sick. It's just not good. Control what you have in your control. That's what you take care of. Everything else, just let it go. We'll see what happens. We'll get through it. Trust me, we'll get through it. A couple of quick things. I'm going to be in one socket just outside of uh, Providence, Rhode Island on December 30th, a pre-New uh, Year celebration. Maybe we'll have a glass of wine. We're going to have a great night. You know, tickets are on sale. There's a link here now that you can get your tickets. Uh, we always have a great time. Look forward to that. Love that part of the country. So that's December 30th, one Socket, Rhode Island. Come and join me for a pre-New Year celebration. Let's bring the new, this old year out the right way, bring the new year in the right way, and uh, maybe it'll be a better one for all of us. That's number one. Number two, very excited about the United Kingdom in March. I'm doing 15 dates. I'll be all over the United Kingdom, of course in London. Going to go back to uh, Liverpool. Man, what a great time we had in Liverpool at the place called The Cave, where uh, the Beatles, you know, first started to sing there. They put in, I don't know, a couple of hundred dates, I think, to Terrific, had a great time there. Gonna be all over, we'll be in Scotland, we'll be in Ireland, gonna have a great time. There's a link here to get tickets, get them now. And I look forward to you. London and, and all of those areas were so great. People treated me so well. I have a lot of followers in, in England, so I can't wait to get back there. So those those two things. You know, in the last couple of weeks, you might have seen me on television a couple of times. You know, I was on Gutfeld, love Gutfeld, and I uh, was on uh, Jesse Waters. And uh, most recently, I was on Access Daily with Mario Lopez. Uh, and I want to tell you about that because we really had a great time. You know, it was the last couple of days. It was really wonderful. But, you know, people have said to me, Michael, why are you only on Fox? And listen, I don't, we don't solicit these people. They call us. I would love to be on MSNBC or CNBC or CNN. They just don't call me, you know. What could I tell you? Listen, I am a Christian. I do have conservative values. And maybe they don't want to, you know, go back and forth with me. I don't know. But I'd be happy to go on. I'd go on The View if they would call me. I'd go anywhere. Believe me, because I am who I am. I am. I have confidence in uh, what I have to say and what I believe. And I'd love to debate or talk about it with anybody. But uh, Fox seems to be calling me quite a bit. Uh, and thank you for those who saw the Gutfeld show. I got a lot of great comments on that. Let me talk to you about Access Daily. What a great show. Mario Lopez, great guy. But you know what? It wasn't only the show. It was the entire experience. You know how I know that Mario is a great guy aside from, you know, the interaction that we had with one another? Because his whole staff, his whole crew were just so upbeat, so wonderful. They enjoyed being on the set. They had a great time. I saw how he greeted them. I heard he's one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. And that was my experience for the time that we were together. We exchanged numbers. We're going to be together again. I'm going to take him for a good Italian dinner for sure. But his whole staff was great. I mean, it was just a great experience. And I've done a lot of television. So, uh, you know, I understand sometimes they're better than others. They're always good, but sometimes better than others. This was one of the best, if not the best, that I've ever been on. And Gutfeld was great too. 
too. Don't get me wrong. But what I want to do is I want to play the clip. It was only about 12 minutes, but I want to show it to you because we got such great feedback, such great comments on it. And uh, Mario Lopez, I don't know if you know this, but if you travel like I do, in just about every hotel in the country that you go in, you turn on your TV, the first thing you see is Mario Lopez. And he's telling you about all the movies and everything else. He's just a great guy. He's got a wonderful personality. And, uh, you know, I just really enjoyed my time with him. So we're going to play this clip now. Uh, tell me what you think of it. Give me your comments, whatever. And yes, you're going to see something in there. And then I have something very special coming up at the end of this month. It's an opportunity that I think many of you are going to want to be involved in. But we'll talk about that. I'm just throwing it out there. As the month goes by, I'll give you a little bit more information about it, but uh, very, very exciting. So with that, let's watch the clip. Access Daily, Mario Lopez coming up. Welcome back to Access Daily. My next guest is a former mafia boss who left the mob after he found God and is now a motivational speaker and co-founder of a successful wine brand. Please welcome Michael Franzese to the show. Hey. Michael, such How a pleasure. Yes. Salute, my we friend. Salute. We got a toast to that. We got a toast to that. I enjoy you uh, with my buddy Chaz Pamentary. That's Chaz. awesome. I want to get to that in a second, but let me try your wine here. Mm. This is delicious. We're going to come full circle back to the wine in a second. But um, before we get there, I want to talk about your days back in the uh, the Cosa Nostra there, in the mob. Your father was Sonny Franzese, right? right? I have a Sonny as a son. Was he Do Santino you? or no, just Sonny? He, no, it was a nickname. His, John was his real name. John. Yeah. Sonny came from what? That was just a nickname? It was my grandmother. Okay. Just called him Sonny when he was out in Brooklyn, you know, called him Sonny. That was it. You didn't want to step out of line with him. Look at that. No. <laughs> He was, uh, I don't know if you know the whole story. My dad, he did 40 years in prison, mm. was released in 2017, the age of 100, the oldest inmate in the system. Wow. And unfortunately passed away at 103 during a pandemic. Oh. Oldest living mob guy in America for sure, quite possibly in the world. Wow. You don't, you don't live to that age in that life. So, you know, no. he's, he's a legend. You really. don't live that age, period. The period. <laughs> <laughs> but in that, in that life for sure. Yeah. Exactly. What, what, what? Crime family did uh, he belong to Colombo? Colombo, yeah. and, and you worked there as well, right? Yeah. Well, what was your title? I was a capo de regime, captain. Okay. My dad was the underboss originally, and um, you know he didn't want this life for me originally. I wanted me to go to school, be a doctor. He goes, uh, he become a major target of law enforcement, gets indicted several times, ends up getting convicted on a big case, federal case, 50-year prison sentence. Mm. I'm a pre-med student, Joe Colombo, he's very close to me, he takes me under his wing, and I gotta help my dad get out of prison, otherwise he's gonna die in there. He goes in when he's 50. At 50 on top of that, I figure he dies in there. So, had a meeting with my dad in Leavenworth Penitentiary in the visiting room. Dad, I'm not going to school. If I don't help you out, you're gonna die in here. Long story short, he proposes me for membership at that point. And uh, actually, it was 48 years ago this month that uh, I became a, a made member of that life. Look at that. Well, I, I want to take a look at a classic scene from one of my favorite movies, the Bamboo Lounge scene from Goodfellas, and see if we hear any familiar names in the crew. And then there was Pete the Killer, who was Sally Balls' brother. Wait, I took care of that thing for you. And you had Nicky Eyes. What's up, guy? And Mikey Franchese. I that guy. Yeah, I want to see him. Hey! Oh, Mikey Brad Chase, you were right before Jimmy two times right there. Uh, now, <laughs> He's gonna get the papers, get the papers. Wait a minute, that, did you know that was gonna happen? Let me or? tell you the story behind this. My wife, she doesn't want to know anything about it. She lived through it all. She didn't want to see movies about it. I get home from prison. I said, honey, let's go see Goodfellas. Kind of nostalgia, I knew all those guys, right? So we go, I'm eating my popcorn. She doesn't like all the violence, right? <laughs> you know how it opens up. Yeah. Pretty graphic, right? <laughs> So she looks at me and she said, is this what your life was really all about? This is what you did? I said, honey, it's a movie. They make things up. Don't pay attention, right? I'm eating. All of a sudden, it comes to that scene. There's Michael Franzi. She looks at me and says, let's go, honey. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great story. Yeah, I don't know what else they were going to show, you know? So then Nick yeah. Pelleggi, who's the writer, is yeah. a friend. So I called him up, Nick. Why'd you throw me in that movie, a different crew? He said, well, you knew all those guys. I know, but different crew. You had name value, and this is why I threw you in. Don't worry about it, this is what he said. Don't worry about it, real easy yeah. for him. Don't worry <laughs> about it, yeah. So what made you eventually want to get out of the, the mob and, and turn your life around? You know, Mario, I'm doing a movie, right, out in, uh, in uh, Florida. Smokey Robinson brought me a script to a movie, a good friend. Wow. And it was a breakdance movie. Really? So I bring, yeah, I bring cast and crew from L.A. to work in a film, 20 professional dancers. We finish 
pre-production. We're going to start principal photography on a Monday. Sunday, I throw a big party for everybody in the back of the hotel. I'm sitting there minding my own business. All of a sudden, out of the water comes this gorgeous 20-year-old girl, I find out. I was like, wow, who is this girl? She was one of my dancers. Long story short, she wanted me to need to do with me, but I pursued her. She's now my wife of 38 years. Hey! And, uh, yes. And she's a young Mexican girl, you know? Oh, it's look the at that. First Mexican I ever met, I married. We didn't have hey. Mexicans back in <laughs> New York. Right. But anyway. We don't get that far. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, and she was a young girl of faith, a Christian girl, and, you know, she kind of led me in that direction. And, you know, look, I, I always say this. What a beautiful story. Well, it's true. And, you know, look, I enjoyed my time in that life. I had a lot of good friends and, you know, get into it and the whole thing. But it's a tough life for families. Oh, yeah. You know, my family, mother, father, brothers, and sisters, destroyed. So I said, am I going to marry this girl? I was a major target. Forget about it. The government wanted me bad. And I said, am I going to marry this girl and put her through all of this? So I had to make a decision. I chose her. And it wasn't easy getting out, Mario. Let me tell you. It's, I bet. Uh, it's a tough. But I bet. So, so faith is a big part of your life. Absolutely. You know, I spent, uh, as part of, of uh, my exit strategy, I took a plea. I, I was indicted seven times. I had two federal racketeering cases, one brought on by Giuliani. I beat that case, went wow. to trial. But uh, as part of my exit strategy, I took a plea to a big racketeering case, 10-year prison sentence, big restitution. But they kept me in lockdown for almost three years, 29 months and seven days. I was in solitary, mm. six by eight cell, 24 seven. During that time, I picked up a Bible. And you know, for me, um, it was all about Jesus Christ and my faith and put me on the right road. And that's, that's why I'm still here. That is so awesome to hear. What a powerful, awesome story. And I like how you're casually dropping Smokey Robinson, Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> all these things are awesome. Okay, cut two. We've got this delicious wine. I love this bottle with the pomegranate. As you know, and I'm sure you've heard, they're saying that Adam and Eve, it wasn't an apple that she bit. It, should, it would have been a pomegranate, the oldest fruit, technically. Uh, how'd you get into this? You can't keep this on a shelf. It's the minute we put it on, flies off, people are loving it. You know, long story short again, wine was always transformative. My grandfather was making it in a basement in Brooklyn and serving it to us when we were 10 years old. Uh. So I always look at wine and family yeah, and all that, right? Exactly. So I meet this young man from Armenia who is a big fan of mine. Young, long story short, his uh, father has, his uh, uncle rather, has a big vineyard at the foot of Mount Ararat in Armenia where the first uh, vineyards were grown. Wow. Noah's Ark lands, the, yeah. uh, the uh, flood subsides. Yeah. They were the they first Christians. The first, Armenian. Vineyard. first Christians, you got it. Mm -hmm. I love this kid. We make a deal together. We're in a wine business for a year and a half, and uh, praise God, doing very well. Look at that. This is awesome. This is awesome. And, and what do we got? We've got some okay, red. Okay, we got a Malbec. That's, that's oh, the Malbec. This is delicious. Yes. It's uh, hearty, delicious. Right? Taste it. Let no, me know I love, what you I think. Love it. I like it. Mm. Delicious. Right? I'm, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take some home. <laughs> oh, I got I got I got you set up already. You got me? All right, good. Thank this you. This is uh this is what we call Areni. Okay. This is actually in the Pinot family, but the good thing about this, it's a little bolder than Pinot. It's kind of between a Pinot and a uh, uh, a cab. All right. I don't discriminate. We got a toast. Mm. That's that's Italian. You Sorry, gotta, of course. Got a toast course. before you drink. I thought you were gonna go salute, to the next salute, one. Salute, salute. Salute, salute. Delicious. Nice, right? Very nice. Okay. And of course, we have Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, wow. You know, a little it's lighter, delicious. Yeah. This is good. I'm liking all these. Let me tell you, the wines from this region are becoming extremely popular. Yeah. Really good. People are loving them. Salud. Salud. You got it right this time. <laughs> of course. Good. <laughs> mm. This is nice, too. Right. Look at that. Congratulations. Mario, you got a hookup now. I hey, got I got a hookup. And I know you're of your you're word, good, so I appreciate that. Real quick, it. before we go, I want to talk about the podcast, The Wise and the Wise Guy. Yes. T tell us who your co-host is. Chaz Palmateri and myself. Uh, yeah, I guess you know who the wise guy is, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he and I, uh, you know, we hooked up uh, several years ago. He's a great guy. Great guy. You know, in the Bronx tale, that character, and I tell him, Chaz, don't get insulted, but you were never better than you were in the Bronx Tale. Oh, one of my favorite Sonny, movies of all time. Yeah, Sonny. Of course. I, I looked at him like it was my dad. Yeah. You know, he was brilliant in that movie, but he, he's a terrific guy. Terrific. That's yeah, awesome. Terrific it, guy. It, it, congratulations on, on everything. And such a pleasure. Thank and thank, thank you for coming on the show thank right you. here.
For more on Francis Wines, you can visit its website. Check it out. We'll be right back. Salud. Salud. Awesome. All right, so there it is. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let me tell you how this came about. Again, they reached out to me. I heard Mario, like many of you and many other people throughout the world, uh, is interested in this whole mob genre. So we had some good dialogue back and forth, you know, both on camera and off camera. And he also loves wine. So he asked me to bring the wines. So we brought him Francis wine. He tasted it, really liked it. And how do I know that? Because they've asked us to send them some, you know, for the holidays, the whole staff. So we're going to be doing that. But hope you enjoyed it. Great time. And listen, Francis wine, okay. You know, Michael, why are you selling? It's my wine. What could I tell you? We believe in the company. We just signed on some major accounts and, um, you know, people are really enjoying it. So uh, if, uh, if wine is something that you like, give it a shot. And if not, that's okay too. But uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, how do I always leave you? The same way. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless each and every one of you, especially as we come into the holiday season. I really wish you all the best. I hope you have some good family time together. You know, we pray for those that had a rough time this year. And, uh, you know, hopefully they find some peace and comfort in some way, shape, or form. A lot of tragedy and heartbreak throughout the world, people. But again, we have no control over that. We just do the best we can. We pray for these people and we hope that life gets better for them. Uh, and like I said, they get some peace and comfort whatever their struggles and challenges might be. So that's it. I'll see you next time. Take care. Yeah.